Hello, welcome to this video on Six Sigma Overview. What is quality? The entire definition of quality revolves around the customer. Quality essentially is all about meeting the customer's requirement. So while you are in a pursuit to create quality products or services, it is extremely important for you to understand what does the customer want and design processes so that these requirements laid down by the customer are met consistently. Let's take an example. If you are looking at a customer for Flipkart, the customer has certain mandatory needs. He is looking for on-time delivery of the product that he has purchased. That is the time that has been offered by Flipkart should be adhered to. He is looking for comparative prices that the product that he is looking at must be as cheap as it gets. He should not be overcharged for a commodity. He possibly is looking at a simple exchange policy. He is looking at multiple payment options, etc. So while in your endeavor to create quality product, you must understand that these are the needs of the customer and design methods and processes to ensure that customer gets what he needs. Let's take another example of a pizza organization. As a customer, I would want that the pizza that I have ordered be delivered on time. The pizza that I have ordered must be hot when I receive it and I should receive what I have ordered for. The additional requirements that I have laid down for maybe extra cheese or extra jalapeno or whatever else that I have mandated. If the pizza delivery organization wants to deliver quality, it has to ensure that the needs, requirements as laid down by the customer must be met. You must look at consistently doing so. You can't be brilliant one time and not be brilliant the next time. The customer is looking at consistent service. And while you devise all this for your external customer, there are internal stakeholders. The internal stakeholders or the internal customers have needs around everything being first time right. Everything being as close as possible to zero defects. Largely because when things are not right the first time, there is additional cost of fixing, cost of replacement, cost of rejection, a loss of customer branding, loss of customer experience. So while the external customer requirements are to be met, the internal customer requirements have to be understood and the business processes must ensure that products that are being built or services that are being offered are being done right the first time with zero defects. When you provide product as per the customer requirement, you would have happy customers and happy customers means profitable business. Now let's look at some definitions of quality. Dr. William Edward Deming defines quality as, and I quote, quality is defined from customer's point of view as anything that enhances their satisfaction, unquote. Extremely clearly articulated that quality would be about adhering to the customer's viewpoint and devising systems and processes such that customer satisfaction is enhanced. In order to enhance the customer satisfaction, it is important to understand what does the customer want and build processes to ensure that customer gets what he desires. Joseph Juran defined quality as, and I quote, fitness for use, those product features that meet the needs of the customers and thereby provide product satisfaction, freedom from deficiencies, unquote. As per Mr. Juran, your product must be fit for use. So in my pizza example, not just that the pizza must be delivered on time, but also that it should be fit for me to be able to use it. I ordered for a pizza as a customer because I wanted to eat it. So when I received the pizza, it should be as desired. 
and any product feature that the customer necessitated must be ensured such that the product satisfies the customer and such products are free from deficiencies you will have to understand that customer needs could be stated could be unstated you will have to understand both of them and devise systems and processes to ensure that such requirements are met consistently the international organization for standardization or iso describes quality as quote degree to which a set of inherent characteristics of a product or service fulfill the requirements unquote clearly articulated that the characteristics of the product that fulfill the requirement of the customer it is saying degree to which a set of inherent characteristics the product features etc which fulfill the requirement of the customer is what is quality so whenever you are looking at delivering quality service it is all about understanding the customer requirement and the degree to which you meet those requirements is the measure of quality now let's understand what is a process a process is a collection of linked tasks which find their end in the delivery of a service or a product to a customer either internal or external a process is a sequence of steps involved in converting the input to the output and one must understand that any business process is nothing but hundreds of processes that are talking to each other output from one process shall become input to the other and hence in an organizational setup if a process is not working well it will end up creating not acceptable output and this not acceptable output shall become input to the next process which will again not be able to create the desired result because the input itself was faulty let's understand this through an example let's look at a series of process first so there is a scheduling process taken care by assistant manager in a bpo business he creates a roster which produces a roster document possibly an excel sheet which is then passed on to the transport department who would then use that roster document to create pick up and drop list which is an input to the cab driver for him to go and pick up people as a output the pick up process will get people on time to the office people who've reached office would now get on the production floor and do their production mis team will compile this production information and send it to the client or maybe the finance team for invoicing and the invoice that has been sent to the client will be an input for the client to pay out money to wns as an organization in this entire process chain even if one business process one not to perform to its optimum let's say that the assistant manager wasn't careful enough in creating the roster which means that incorrect roster will become an input to the transport department's roster making process which will mean that an incorrect transport roster would be handed over to the cab driver which would mean that the cab driver will not be picking up people on time which would mean that i may end up getting shrinkage or lesser number of people on the floor for production which would mean that i would have lesser production for that day which would mean lesser invoiced amount which would mean lesser money coming from my customer organization is nothing but hundreds of processes that are knit together and the output from one process shall become input to the next process so you must understand that preceding processes must do well for the next process to do well because input provisioning is very critical for success let's look at a few examples very simple things in life like making sales is a process making a cup of tea is a process planning a picnic is a process creating an account for the customer is a process indexing a customer health report is a process 
taking customer call is a process. All of these are processes. And like we were saying, a process is a sequence of steps involved in converting the input to an output. So let's say I am looking at making a cup of tea. What are the steps involved? Based on the decision of how much tea is required, I measure the quantity of water and quantity of milk. I pour that into a pan. I light the gas stove and put the pan on the gas stove. Allow it to boil for some time. Then I put sugar and the desired quantity of tea leaves. Let it boil for some time and my tea is created. It is important that in a business environment, such things must be done in a consistent manner. We cannot allow each person to do his own thing because brilliance would end up creating variation in the system. If 10 of us were to prepare a cup of tea and all of us use our own ways of deciding how much sugar is required or how much tea leaves do I put, what is the duration for which I will boil the tea? If everyone does not follow the same schedule, same pattern, it will end up creating variation. So my cup of tea could be sweeter than yours. What is important to understand is that a process should govern organizations. If this tea making process is in your home, variability is still acceptable. But if you are Chayos, an organization that is selling cup of tea and each time as a customer that you walk up to Chayos and they give you tea which is differently each time, the quantity of sugar varying, then it is a problem. Processes make an organization more predictable, systems more predictable. There is a defined outcome that we are looking for. Azuma McDonald, they are creating burgers in thousands every day. And if we allowed the people making burgers to do their own thing, it is not acceptable. Hence, organizations will devise processes across such things to ensure that there is little or no variation. And unless you have process, you will never be able to meet the customer requirement. To meet the customer requirement, you will have to understand business process and you will have to create processes that will be able to meet the customer requirement. Meeting the customer requirement was all about quality and the customer expects consistent performance. You can't order from Flipkart and get the first product in three hours and for the second product you ended up waiting for 32 hours. If they both were similar products, the customer expects consistent performance and consistency can only be driven by process and not by people. Brilliance of people will have to be replaced by brilliant processes. Now let's look at some process improvement methodologies. First process improvement methodology that we are studying is Lean, which has tools, methodologies like Kaizen, Value Stream Map or VSM, 5S, Visual Management, Pokayoke, Kanban and many more. While the second method is Six Sigma, which has defined methodologies or techniques like DMEC and DMADV. DMEC is used for an existing process and DMADV when you are developing a new process. We shall discuss all of these in the later part of our video. Thank you.